What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to tell you a story of my previous marriage and how that led to where I am now. And as I mentioned in my last video, this year marks 10 years since the beginning of my transition. So there's been a lot that's happened, ups, downs, bad stories, good stories, um, that I really want to share with you in this video series. And the reason I'm starting with pre-transition before this past 10 years even began with my marriage is because I get a lot of questions asking me how to come out to a spouse or a partner. And I want to start by saying, don't take my advice on this because I did it the wrong way. And you're going to hear that in this story. It's a very difficult subject to handle. But a little context, um, I decided to attend a Baptist college. Um, I was going to become a youth minister and this was part of my process on trying to run from how I felt. In my second year, we did a mission trip to San Antonio and we stayed at this church and worked with these kids at this government assisted housing project. And my focus was basketball and just connecting with the kids. And it was absolutely amazing. And it really touched me, especially when we left and the kids were crying and trying to hold on to us. So my roommate and I decided to go back for the summer. And we lived on the floor of the church to continue to work with these kids. And we got to know the college age group at the church really well while we were there. And in particular, there was this one girl that, that was there that caught my eye and we got to hang out a lot and get to know each other. And we kind of started dating, I guess. I mean, even though it was potentially going to be this really long term or long distance thing, but I convinced her to come back to college. She hadn't started college yet. And so we were officially dating at that point, got to know each other really well. We were there for the fall semester. And during Christmas break, um, obviously she went back to San Antonio and I went back to Northwest Arkansas. And this is back before either of us had cell phones. So we were still having to use landlines if we wanted to communicate. And I grew up in the country, we were poor, and my mom was not about to let me run up the phone bill with a long distance call. So thankfully we had dial up internet and she and I were able to communicate that way. Um, I think it was either AOL or Yahoo Messenger. And we were chatting one night and I remember, cause this was still so early in our relationship, but I wanted to tell her a little bit about what I was feeling inside before we went further with our relationship. And I don't remember exactly how it went, but I remember basically typing away. I was nervous. I said, there's something I really want to tell you, but I don't know how. And she said, you could tell me anything. And I said, yeah, but I'm afraid you really won't like me too much if I tell you this. And she said, I would love you no matter what, just what's going on. And so I told her, I said, for some reason, there's a part of me that I just really want to dress up like a girl, like Halloween or something, and just see what this is like. Like, this is just something, I didn't know how to say it. I didn't know really the terminology still, even though I had been researching online. I didn't know the word transgender. I didn't know that this is really what was going to happen for me, or that it was even possible. So I just said I wanted to dress up. And she said, wow, it would take a lot for you to look like a girl, but I mean, I love you no matter what. So sure, I mean, we could do that for Halloween one year. I thought, okay, awesome. And then I just dropped it. Um, I was afraid to push it any further. So she didn't say anything. It wouldn't until maybe the next year or two back at, at school that I happened to show her some of the shoes that I had. I had a couple pairs of heels that I had ordered online. And she was a little awkward about it, maybe a little off put, but she really didn't say anything. And even one of the summers, because I, I kept going back to San Antonio every summer to continue to work with these kids and would take bigger and bigger groups with me down there. Um, but one of those summers, I didn't want to keep those shoes in my dorm room because people might go through your stuff. So she actually hid them in her closet, um, which was crazy because anyway, she, she denies any of that ever happened. But I remember that. And so again, I was trying to suppress all of this the best I could. So I acted like it wasn't a thing. I never brought it up again. Several years later, we got married. Um, she had two more years of school left. I was about to graduate, but I hadn't taken two of my basics yet. That was gonna be my last semester. And I decided I really didn't wanna work in the church. Um, I just had a lot of conflict with that. So I decided to, to, to dual major and get a degree in business. So I might as well just finish and graduate with her. So 
we did that. And then we graduated in 2006, um, moved to a neighbor's city. I'm just to kind of get our bearings where we we're going to go. She really wanted to go back to Texas. Um, so there was a few times she actually made a trip home and I stayed back in Arkansas because I had a job. But on my days off, I would experiment with being myself a little bit. Um, I had been chatting with different people online, um, through Yahoo Messenger, different groups. And some people were nice enough to send me, you know, a wig, a few clothes, different things like that, that I could, you know, try being myself with. And I would do that. And then we moved to Waco, down to Texas. And I had my own collection of clothes and everything of my own, but they were hidden away in a couple of storage bins below all of my sports equipment, my sports collectibles and Beckett's and all of that as to never be found. One morning we were getting ready for church and she took a lot longer than me. She was in the bathroom getting ready. So I was in the computer room um, watching some YouTube videos and chatting away with somebody on Yahoo Messenger. And this somebody was somebody was kind of like me in the same boat, I guess. They were older, um, probably considered them, themselves more as a cross-dresser, but had, you know, the feelings of wanting to transition as well. And so we would just chat. Well, she came in the room. She's like, it's your turn. Go. And I just got up and went. Completely forgot that the Yahoo Messenger thing was open. And I'm in the bathroom and I hear this loud scream of what the, and I'd never heard her cuss before. Um, again, we were getting ready for church, very religious family. We went to a Baptist college together. I immediately go darting in the room and Yahoo Messenger is pulled up and she even had it bigger. And she goes, what is this? And somebody named Michelle had popped up and said, hi, sweetie, how are you? So obviously this doesn't look good, right? It looks like I'm chatting with some girl named Michelle and cheating. So I'm freaking out, telling her, no, it's not what you think. It's not what you think. I drop to my knees. I'm trying to plead with her. No, just listen to me. And I'm panicking and I'm freaking out. I said, do you remember back in college when I said this? And she didn't remember that. <sighs> Clearly, it just kind of blew past her mind. Um, and so I told her, I said, look, that's somebody that's like me. She goes, what do you mean like you? I said, well, somebody else who kind of feels like they're, they're just not who they're supposed to be. Like they, they like to dress up as, as a woman. And so you're just talking about that and doing that for Halloween and, and kind of seeing if this is who I am. And she was not having that. She shut that down, said, go get ready. We went to church. Everything was weird and awkward because I mean, her parents are there as well. They can sense something's wrong, but she didn't say anything. I begged her not to. I said, please don't say anything to your parents. Let's just talk about this. And it took a few days for her to come around and we talked and I shared some with her and told her, I said, look, I have a MySpace page, you know, back when people had MySpace and um, I'm dating myself a lot in this video, landlines, dial up internet, <laughs> MySpace. Anyway, um, so I tell her about MySpace. I had been out a few times to the mall, taken some pictures and I had all of that up on my MySpace page just to connect with other people that were like me. And she pretty much demanded all that has to stop. Um, I have to get rid of everything I have. Um, that's it, period, if we're going to continue. And of course I loved her. I didn't wanna lose her. So obviously I said, okay, I will get everything, get rid of everything, but can I sell the stuff? I mean, I could make some money off of it. We, we, it's not like we had a ton of money. So she was fine with that. Of course, I really wasn't gonna sell anything because I wanted to keep my stuff. I wanted to be able to be myself when I had free time. And I was at work one day. I was management at Hobby Lobby. And this is a couple months down the road. And I get a text, don't come home. Oh, we had cell phones by then. It was a few years after college. Anyway, so I get a text, don't come home. I'm freaking out. Um, I can't leave the store. We live like 40 minutes away from it. 
and I'm the closing manager, so I can't even just run home really quick. And I was like, no, I'm coming home. She goes, no, I found your, I don't know if you can really cuss on YouTube, but you get the idea. And she said, I don't want you here. I told you to get rid of it. It's here. You're still doing this stuff. And so I said, no, I'm coming home. We'll talk. Time for a quick break to introduce you to today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives. It offers thousands of classes ranging from photography and videography to better organizational skills to how to create a better YouTube video and edit them in a more entertaining way, something I could probably use. So I recently took this class by Michelle B called Designing the Life You Want, Four Exercises for Clarity and Motivation. Something I've struggled with a little bit lately has been motivation, so this class caught my eye. I love that there's a workbook attached to it. So it allows you to follow along and write out the goals you have for your day and your life. And number three here, creating your anti-vision. Sounds opposite of what you wanna do, but the way it's explained has actually helped me move forward and be more productive in my day. And as you can see on the rest of the site, it's easy to navigate. They're gonna recommend classes to you based on your interests, based on videos you've watched. There's so much here right at your fingertips. So I encourage you to check them out. Um, it's not just an advertisement thing. I actually do use the classes. They're really, really helpful. Um, and for the first thousand people who click the link in the description box below, you're gonna get one month free. Doesn't hurt anything, doesn't cost a thing for you to at least try it out and see if it's something you're interested in. So I highly recommend it. Now, back to my story. So when I get home, she's already in bed, doors closed, pretty much don't come in, leave her alone. So I'm just left being terrified throughout the night. And the next day I've already decided I'm not going to work, I'm calling in. Um, when I wake up, she was already gone. She didn't wanna to talk to me in the morning. She was already off to work. And so I stayed home, kind of freaking out, had my basketball just with me all day. I was watching some basketball, waiting for her to come home. And she wouldn't reply to my texts. She wouldn't respond to any phone calls. And then that evening, she comes to the door, um, bolts right past me to the bedroom, and her parents are right behind her. And her dad, Pretty, as soon as I try to talk to her, her, dad comes over and gets in my face and says, do not talk to her. You leave her alone. You are screwed up in the head. There's something wrong with you. Um, you need to get yourself fixed. And he said, she's coming to stay with us for now until she figures out what she wants to do. And mind you, he's a very large individual. So I was terrified. So I just kept quiet. I let them do what they want. He said, leave her alone. Do not try to contact her for a few days. Let her figure her stuff out. Um, in the meantime, you get help. And then they left. Um, she packed a few things and they left. So I'm kind of just stuck in limbo, not knowing what's happening. I'm terrified, um, hating myself to the core because this is just something that won't go away and it's ruining my life. Um, several days later, well, I say several days, it was probably a week or two when she finally came back home. I had come back from work um, one evening and she was sitting on the couch. She had a notebook in her hand and there was about three to four pages just front and back and she said, read this. And it was basically demands of what needs to happen for us to move forward. So, you know, it was obviously getting rid of everything. I can't do this anymore. One of the things that she used to love was the fact that I shaved my legs. That had to stop. Um, so she had all these rules in place of this is what I need from you. So obviously I loved her and I was going to do whatever she needed. So I worked at doing all of that. I will admit that I didn't get rid of everything. Um, I tried, but it was also a big part of me was like, but those are my clothes. That's part of my identity. So I just got a storage unit. Now that did suppress it a little bit. I wasn't able to really access any of my clothes or anything for a while. So it died down a little bit just because I really wanted to do everything I could to keep her. Um, I moved to a new job at a furniture store, ended up getting promoted. So we moved to another city, it's about two and a half hours away. <clears throat> and my stuff made its way with me to another storage unit. 
and um, we got a bill in the mail one day and it was for a storage unit. So immediately she questioned me about it. And of course, immediately I lied. I don't know who that is. That must be somebody else with that name. And I tried to make it up. I tried to call around and get somebody, I tried to get the storage unit to collaborate my story if she ever called. This is how bad it was. I was absolutely terrified of losing her that I was just lying left and right. Um, over the next couple of years and even in the past, she'd come home and she'd be like, you're doing your crap again, aren't you? And I'd lie, that's all I did was, no, I, I, no, I don't know what she's talking about. And she'd find, you know, a press on nail or makeup residue in the sink. And I'd be like, how, I looked for an hour for that damn nail and you're home for five minutes and you find it. This is just BS. Um, but that's just how it would go. So again, I was trying, I really was. Um, having things in my storage probably shouldn't have happened but again it was part of my identity so again this is why I'm telling you I did this completely wrong like I just kept lying about it over the years I developed more friends online as I researched more connections more people who would send me clothes and wigs and makeup um, one friend in particular that would make trips um, to wherever I was like it was Waco or Dallas and help me get a hotel and take pictures for me um, so I could add them to my MySpace page because it just wasn't going away. The more I had opportunity to be myself, the more I never wanted it to stop. Um, I didn't want to go back to who I was. So fast forward a couple years, we moved back to Waco because I got promoted to store manager. Um, we had had our little tiff while we were at the other place. A wall got built up, but it seemed like our move back to where she was able to be near family was good for us. She seemed to be really kind of connecting again. We were getting a little bit closer. And wouldn't you know, that dang computer screwed me again. Um, I get home one day and she's like, you're doing it again, aren't you? Wait, what do you mean? So I had a Facebook at that point. And I had logged out, but when you go to put it, pull it back up on the computer, the last username still stayed in the, in the field. And obviously it wasn't hers and it wasn't the one that she knew of. So that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Weird cliche, but that's just, that's really what did it for her. She was like, you, you just can't make this go away. Like I want a divorce. And I begged her, I was like, please, I'll do whatever it takes. We'll do, we'll do counseling, whatever you need. And she's like, no, I can't. Um, so I convinced her to at least go do one last dinner. Cause we used to go to dinner like at least once or twice a week just to connect. And we were there and it was silent for the most part. And then she spoke up and she asked, do you really think I was that dumb? You know, about the storage unit, about all the lying. And I, I told her, I said, no, it, it was just fear on my end. Um, you know, you're taught to hate yourself if, if, you're any, if you're conceived different in any way. So, I, again, I begged her at dinner. I was like, please, you know, come make this work. And she said, look, um, I'm not happy. You're not happy. Um, I finally went and looked at your Facebook page. And I saw your pictures. I can never see you as the man that I need, as, as my husband. I can't see that, I can't picture you that way. And one thing that really shocked me is she said, do you remember all those years I told you when we took a picture together that you weren't smiling? And I, I never really caught that. I was like, no, I'm smiling, I really am. She said, no, you're not. And she said, you really weren't smiling in those pictures, but when I saw those pictures of you on your Facebook, that's a smile. She said, I'm not happy and you're not happy and it's not fair to either of us. She didn't agree with who I am, what I was doing um, to her religiously, it's all wrong. But she could still on a human level see that 
me being forced to be this person was unfair to both of us. So at that point, I couldn't argue. I couldn't plead with her anymore. It was just to let it go. So at that time, she didn't have a job. Um, I was doing really well at the store, so I was letting her get established. We still lived together for the next several months, um, basically me in the living room, her in the bedroom, so that she could get established. She could get a job, save some money. I was going to give her a lot of money to help her start out as well. Um, so eventually that's what happened. And when she left, that's when um, I've talked about the story about suicide and how I had a bottle of pills and had planned on ending my life um, until my cats, you know, were in my face licking the tears and they really saved me. And it was because of this whole process of things that happened over our essentially 10 years together that I learned how much hiding and lying about anything can destroy people and can really hurt um, both sides of the equation um, because it's really taxing it's really tolling um, as, even on the person like on my end um, I still beat myself up today because of how things happened because I never wanted to hurt her I never wanted to lie I never wanted to seem deceitful because she was my world like I still care about her um, I've even gone and checked her Facebook a few times she's remarried she has kids now um, I'm super happy for her, um, but we've lost touch. Like she wants nothing to do with me. I've tried to reach out a few times. We've spoken about some different things, and you know she wished me the best, and that's all I can do for her. And let all of you know that it's not an easy thing to deal with um, talking to a partner or spouse. But if you love them, and if you love yourself. You'll be true to who you are and you'll let them know the sooner the better. Um, they may surprise you and they may stay with you and love you just as you are, and they may not. And if they don't, I promise you, you're going to find a whole new set of friends and family and probably another significant other along the way because who you truly are is wonderful. It's magnificent, it's beautiful, and resilient. So anyway, that's my story. Um, it rambled on a little bit, but I think it's important to share. It's been, it's been a difficult but amazing journey. So I thank you guys for sticking with me. I thank you for watching this video. Um, it's been a little bit more emotional than I thought it would be. So I'm gonna let you go. Love you guys. Bye.